Father God, we just thank you and praise you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. Father, we come because you first loved us, Lord God, and you continually love us. You continually pour out your love on us, Lord God, even when we don't deserve it, Lord God. You've always been a good, good father, and you continually are, Lord God. Yes. And we just come to say thank you this morning, Lord God. Father, we pray that we can come to love like you love us, like, Father, the way you love everyone, Lord God. Help us to be a, a loving people this morning, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to recognize each other, Lord God, as one under you, Lord God. Father, we need you this morning, Lord God. We need you every morning, every minute, every hour, every day, Lord God. Father, we just come to be in your presence this morning, Lord God. Come to worship. Come to lift up praise. Come to just to say thank you, Lord God. We come thanking you this morning, Lord God. Father, we just welcome you in this place, Lord God. We pray your presence, Lord God, would inhabit the atmosphere, fill it up, Lord God, from a spiritual perspective, Lord God. Let the love of God always resonate in this place, Lord God. And within each of us, Lord God, we just thank you and praise you this morning, Lord God. Father, as I always say, no matter what's going on in the world, Lord God, we still lift up praise. We still lift up worship. We still come with thanksgiving, Lord God, because you are a good, good father, Lord. And as we've learned, Lord God, all the trials, all the tribulations, Lord God, that we go through, Lord, are building blocks to build us up, Lord God, and empower us to be the men and women you've created us to be. So we thank you, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, asking that you have your way this morning, Lord God. Have your way, Lord God. Help us to step out of the way, Lord God. Let your presence, Lord God, just have its way in the midst this morning, Lord God. We just lift you up, Lord God, and thanking you, Lord God, for every mountain moving experience, Lord God, in our lives, Lord God. Father, there's been something that we didn't even know about, Lord God, that you were ahead of us, Lord God, and moved it out the way so we didn't even have to deal with it. We just come to say thank you this morning, Lord God. We thank you and praise you this morning, Lord God. Father, we empty out any hardness, anything that we have against anyone, Lord God. We lay it at your feet and ask for forgiveness, Lord God. We don't want us to be a blocking, a blocking our blessings from you, Lord God. Help us this morning, Lord God, to love like you, Lord God, that there be no pretensions, Lord God, or, or going through the motions, Lord God, but that people can experience the real love that only comes from you, Lord God, instead of searching for that worldly love, Lord God, that love, Lord God, that may come with stipulations, Lord God. Father, pour your love out on your people this morning, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to be more like you. We just thank you and we praise you this morning, Lord God. Father, we want you to have your way this morning, Lord God. Have your way, Father God, no matter what we've been through, Lord God. No matter what the enemy may have done in the past week, Lord God, or way back, things that we're still holding on to, Lord God, you bring us through, Lord God. You're our Savior, Lord God. You're our deliverer, deliverer Lord God. Yes. Father, we count on you and we thank you and bless you, Lord God. We thank you to be standing here another Sunday morning, Lord God, not lost to the world, Lord God. We thank you and we praise you, Lord God. Father, utilize us, Lord God, every moment, Lord God, every hour to do your will, Lord God. Not that we get glorified, Lord God, but you be glorified. Your kingdom may be glorified, Lord God. Put us to work like your son says, Lord God. I'm about my father's business, Lord God. Help us to be a people that move from chasing different things, Lord God, that have nothing to do with the kingdom 
to be about our Father's business, Lord God. Help us, Lord God. Father, you know the week ahead, Lord God. You know Tuesdays, the elections, Lord God. You know different thoughts and different ideals that people have in place, Lord God. You know the outcome before any of us, Lord God. Father, we lift up Tuesday's election to you in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. As we've been taught, Lord God, you said you can even use a mule, Lord God, to get across your purpose, Lord God. Whoever is elected, Lord God, help us to come to, together as one people, Lord God, under you, Lord God, under you, Lord God. <coughs> Excuse me. We just thank you and praise you, Lord God. Father, we bind any civil war. We bind any racial uh, wars, Lord God. We bind any unrest, Lord God. We bind anything that would um, come against a United States of America, Lord God. Help to keep us united, Lord God, under you, Lord God. This country came together to worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord God. Father, take us back to the beginning, Lord God, when we were seeking to express ourselves to you, Lord God, and we was one family under you, Lord God. Help us in the days ahead, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to finally get it right, Lord God. Help us to come together, Lord God, as the sons and daughters of the Most High God, Lord. We just lift up the election to you, Lord God, the candidates, Lord God, all those going to the polls, Lord God, and the outcome, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that your will be done, Lord God. Not so much us, not so much the lever we pull, Lord God, but that your will be done and that that candidate would be a candidate for the people, Lord God, doing the will, your will, Lord God, following after your word, Lord God, helping to make America the country you called it to be, Lord God. We thank you and we praise you, Lord God. Father, we lift up the people that are going through the COVID virus, Lord God, all those that are sick in the hospital, Lord God, all those, Lord God, that are just going through, Lord God, wherever they may be in a hospital, Lord God, at home because they don't, aren't able to get treatment, Lord God, wherever it is, Lord God, Father, we just ask for a healing virtue to go through now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Not just here in this country, Lord God, but all over the world, Lord God. All over the world, this virus has been spreading, Lord God. Taking members of families, Lord God. Uh, just leaving people in a panic, Lord God. And some just not caring, Lord God. Father, help us to be a caring people, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to look to you before we look to others, Lord God, for the help that we need in any situation, Lord God, that we may hear, Lord God, if you speak a word that says we as a people need to repent and then this virus can go away, that we would do it, Lord God, and the virus would be eradicated, Lord God. <coughs> Father, we speak a peace that passes all understanding, Lord God, for all families, Lord God, that lost family members because of the virus, Lord God. Father, we ask that it would bring them closer to you, Lord God, that they would lean on you, Lord God, that they would look to you for that peace, Lord God, and get it, Lord God. We just thank you, Lord God, any disease, Lord God, any sickness, Lord God, anything that comes up against your people, Lord God. Father, this morning we bind it in the name of Jesus, Lord God, and we release the blood of Jesus, Lord God, and its healing virtue, Lord God, to cover this globe, Lord God. Every person, Lord God, every one of our brothers and sisters, Lord God, Father, we release healing this morning from this altar in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Not because I'm saying it or I'm doing it, Lord God. I'm asking you, Lord God, that you may be glorified, Lord God. Release your healing now, Lord God, in Jesus' name, Lord God. Father, we're going through on so many different fronts, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to look to you for our help, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to seek that relationship, Lord God, so that we can have it with you, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, not to be distracted, Lord, with the things that are going on in the world, but to keep our eyes on you, Lord God. We thank you and we praise you this morning, Lord. Father, we even thank you for Jesus and his saving grace, Lord God. <coughs> Excuse me, above anything else, Lord God, above anything we can ask for, above anything we can want, Lord God, we thank you for Jesus and his saving grace that started and saved a wretch like me who once was lost but now I'm found, Lord God, who was who's blind, who was blind but now I see, Lord God. I thank you for Jesus and his saving grace, Lord God. I thank you for his blood, Lord God, and its healing virtue. I thank you for the relationship that only comes when we, Lord God, relate to you. When we surrender, Lord God, our will, our way, Lord God, and follow after you. Father, we thank you for Jesus today, Lord God. We thank you for his Holy Spirit, Lord God. Even when he went back home to be with you after a job well done, Lord God, he left his spirit, Lord God, within us, never abandoning us, Lord God, but letting us know, Lord God, that you are always with us. We just thank you, Lord God. Father, there's no one greater than you, Lord God. We worship the true and living God, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for the things that you do, Lord God, even behind the scenes, Lord God, how you make a way out of no way, Lord God, how what you speak into us comes to fruition, Lord God. Father, we thank you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. Father, we thank you for this platform. Running International Church, Lord God, where you've given Linda and myself an opportunity to share with your sons and daughters, Lord God, a word, Lord God, to be able to lift up prayer, prayers, Lord God, to be able to worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord God. Father, we pray that Remnant International Church be everything and do everything you've called it to be, Lord God. Father, we speak no weapon formed against us would ever prosper, Lord God, that we will be obedient to your will and your way and never step out before you. I lift up your daughter, Linda, to you this morning, Lord God, as you ready her, Lord God, to deliver your word, Lord God, and pray, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that it would touch somebody, Lord God, that it would speak to them, Lord God, that it would want them to surrender to your will and to your way, Lord God, that they would hunger and thirst for a relationship, Lord God, with you, Lord God, wanting to hear from you, Lord God, wanting to come to know you as God, Lord God, wanting to have that ultimate relationship, Lord God. Father, I thank you for blessing her, Lord God, with your word, Lord God, instilling your spirit in her, Lord God, to bless people, Lord God, to change their lives, Lord God, to help them to surrender and come to you, Lord God. Father, we bind anything that comes up against her, Lord God, anything that we try to keep her from doing what you've called her to do. We bind it in the name of Jesus. Father, we release the oil from heaven, Lord God, to continually pour on her, Lord God, that she may minister, Lord God, according to your will and your way. We just thank you for her this morning, Lord God. Father, we turn this service over to you, Lord God, asking that you just fill this place, Lord God, Change it from the space that it is, Lord God, to a place of worship, to a place of praise, Lord God, to a place where we can come and be in your midst, Lord God. Fill it up, Lord God. 
We just thank you and we praise you, Lord God. We always pray, Lord God, that your will be done, Lord God, through everything we say, through every prayer lifted up, Lord God, to any song sung, Lord God, anything we do, Father, we ask that our actions, our interactions, reactions, and transactions would always line up to your will and your way, Lord God, and that you be glorified in everything we do. Yeah. We come thanking you this morning, Lord God. We just thank you this morning, Lord God. We lift up our family to you, Lord God. All of our families, Lord God, all over the world, Lord God. Everybody is our brothers and sisters, Lord God. We lift up the persecuted Christians, Lord God. Those that have to hide to lift you up in praise and worship. Those that are being persecuted because they recognize you as God, Lord. Father, we pray that you would release whatever is needed for them in their time of need. That you would send your fiery chariot angels, Lord God to gird them up, Lord God, to protect them and keep them in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. Father, that they can be a representative of who you are, Lord God, that with death hanging over their heads, Lord God, they still lift you up yes. in praise and worship, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to follow after their example, Lord God. We just thank you for them, Lord God. We thank you and we praise you this morning. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Thank you, Beth. Excuse me. Good morning, Remnant family. Good morning. This is Remnant International Church. Remnant International Church is a home-based ministry. That's an online ministry based out of Moyoc, North Carolina. Got to call my wife, Prophetess, Pastor Linda, and myself to share a word with the people using these resources. So each Sunday we come to try to share a word. Whatever God has put on our heart, we come to share and do what he has called us to do. Whatever he's called us to do, wherever it may be, whatever it is, we're going to obey. We're going to do it because we know how good he's been to us. He's been so good and delivered us from so much that there's no way we would ignore the call to do what he's called us to do. So we pray this morning that something from this broadcast would activate the Holy Spirit within us, within everyone, and have them step up to the plate and ask God what it is that you would want me to do, what it is that you called me to do, and be obedient and get it done. We just thank you, Father. And at that, I'm just going to turn this over to Pastor Linda, again, I just pray that everyone receives the word and understands God is trying to get our attention that none may be left behind. Please don't be one of those that are left behind. Take this word and feed on it that yeah. you too may have a place in his kingdom. God yeah. bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you glory, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Fill us up, God. Fill us up until we overflow, God. Yes. Hallelujah. Fill us up, God. Fill us up, God, until we overflow. Let us overflow with your love. Let us overflow with your joy. Let us overflow, Father God, with all of the attributes of the kingdom, of the spirit, God. Let us be examples of your light and your love and most of all, your forgiveness. We praise you today yes, Lord. and every day in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
So I'm just thankful that, you know, God has chosen us to just pour out, you know, transparently when this all began and we made the transition to becoming pastors. I didn't know what God expected me to say Sunday after Sunday or every other Sunday. I had no idea. But because this isn't my platform, this is his platform, he will prompt and nudge you so that you know exactly what you need to be saying, what direction you need to be going, what you need to be praying about, and what you need to be covering. So I always pray, and my husband too, less of us and more of him, Amen. so that we can do what God has called us to do. This Amen. platform isn't about popularity. This pa platform isn't about, hey, look at me, I'm important. This platform is about loving God and wanting to be obedient to what he called us to do, that we do it. Even if we don't fully understand, we do it. Amen. Amen. So I pray that even if you're Thank not a pastor, Jesus. even if you don't have a title, that you would be just as obedient Amen. and do what God has called you to do. Amen. It's not about, I need a degree. It's not about, you know, 10, 15 years of preparation. Okay. It's about being um, obedient and willing to hear what God is saying so that you are led by his spirit Amen. and not your flesh. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And I don't know, maybe that ties into today's message. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe that was just a public service announcement <laughs> that you don't need to just come to church. You need to be led by the one who Amen. we serve. Amen? Amen? It's about Jesus. It's about yes, his will. Lord. It's about what he's calling us to do. It's not about, oh, next time I get a mic, I'm going to say this. Or, <coughs> you know, the next chance I get, I'm going to, you know, shout out this person or I'm going to do that. It's not about that. It's about God, it's about his love, and if what you're saying isn't edifying, building up, discipling people, then you need to question whether or not God even told you to say that, right? Amen. Or if he ever told you to do that, amen? amen. We want to be obedient. You don't want to hinder someone from coming to Christ. You want to aid them. You want to yes, help Lord. them in their walk so that they get discipled and they get stronger and stronger. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So today's message is healing your mindset. Mm. Healing your mindset. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I don't know, you might want to call it a warning message, but you can just listen to the message and hear what the Lord is saying, right? So when it comes to healing, we've all heard about it. We all talk about it. Maybe some of us in our bodies right this very moment, we need healing, right? Amen. We reference the man who tried to enter the water after the angel stirred it, right? And it's like he couldn't make it. Someone always made it in before him. We also talk about when it comes to healing, Lazarus coming forth, right? And even if you backtrack a little bit, you know, many may have wondered, well, that's Jesus' friend Lazarus. What is taking him so long? We sent word and we told him that Lazarus has died and he needs help, that he would come and do what he does, heal, deliver, and set free. But Jesus took his time. Why did he take his time? Because when you are the one who controls time, Amen. death, life, and Thank all of those Jesus. things, there's no rush. When you show up, what's supposed to be will be. Amen. 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 So we talk about Lazarus Thank being you, raised from the dead, which is technically a healing from death, right? Amen. He was dead and now he lived. So that spirit of death was broken off of Amen. him and he came out of the tomb. Thank so you, that's Jesus. healing. But how can you equate healing to a mindset? Mm. Amen? Amen. Healing your mindset is very real. And healing your mindset is very necessary, especially as believers, right? We have to heal the way we think. We have to heal the way we hear things. We have to hear, heal the way we process things. We have to heal what we believe about God, what we believe about ourselves, and we even have to heal what we believe about God's word, right? Or what he meant by certain scriptures. Let me give you an example. 
right? If someone explains something to you, right, the reasoning behind something, and you receive it, even if it's error, that explanation will then become a part of the way you think and understand that thing, right? And that will happen and continue in your life until God's word comes to confront that truth. It'll have you scratching your head. When the truth comes, it'll have you scratching your head like, wow, I always thought this or I always thought that. And that's God healing the mindset. And that's what his word does. His word has come. He came, but his word also has come to heal us, deliver us, and set us free. Thank you, Jesus. Amen? Amen. So if I say, I love you, I really love you, but I really wish you wouldn't do this, this, or that, right? If you're only hearing, I wish you wouldn't do this, this, or that, and skip right over the I love you part, then you've missed the entirety of the message. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? So unhealed parts of us in our mind can, you know, allow us to focus on the negative or certain things or things that haven't even been said and we garble up the message and we miss it and then it loses its potency, right? Mm -hmm. It can also, an unhealed mind or thought process can lead us to magnify things that are minor issues and make them so big and blown out of proportion that we're wondering what just happened, you know, all I said was this or all I said was that, right? It can affect how you receive people if your mindset isn't healed, Amen. right? So another example, if God's word says, and it does, the meek shall inherit the earth. Mm -hmm. And you feel like, well, I'm struggling in my finances. I can't make ends meet. I don't know what's going on. I feel like I'm under attack. The way you will process that if your mind isn't healed is that I must not be meek enough because I'm not getting the benefits the scripture's talking about. So it must be something wrong with me because I'm not inheriting the earth. We have to heal our minds. Amen. Amen. I have a friend years ago and she, she made a statement that really stuck with me because yeah, you can equate it to worldly things, but you can also equate it to spiritual things too. She said, just like you learn things, you have to unlearn things. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people who mean us no harm or, you know, they just, they were passing on what they thought was helpful inf inf information or a way to explain something or sharing things that aren't fully accurate and that don't really benefit us. So then we have to go through the process of unlearning those things so we can understand God's way because God's way is the perfect way, amen? Amen. amen. And just because you learn something doesn't mean it's right. Mm -hmm. And if it's not right, again, you have to unlearn it. You don't just let that thought process just exist in your life and keep thinking that way when God has given us a more excellent way. Mm -hmm. Amen. We can't think that we're going to say the same sinner's prayer and then immediately it will just move any wrong thoughts or motives out of our life. It doesn't work like that. God moves in our life, but it doesn't mean that there's no effort on our part. We have to do the work. We have to put in the time. We have to dedicate ourselves, and we have to be obedient, and we have to be active participants in our own spiritual growth. Amen. Amen? Hallelujah. We have to allow the word of God to transform us. Amen. You know, it's not just enough to read the word. I read five scriptures today. I read the whole, you know, Luke chapters and, 
You know, it's not enough to boast in what you've done, but what you've done needs to begin to transform you from the inside out. Amen. Amen. So scripture says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Mm -hmm. That's Romans 12 and verse 2. So what is the scripture saying? It's saying that the world will try to conform you to its way. And that if you don't renew your mind, if you're not an active participant in renewing your mind, you can easily stay there even after you've said the sinner's prayer, even after you've come to church every Sunday for 15 years, you can stay stuck in a mental bondage and never grow. Mm -hmm. We don't want that to be us, amen? amen. We want to break through. We want our minds to be transformed. We want all the gifts that the Bible has stored up for us, that the inheritance that Jesus left us for sacrificing his life and just being that uh, proxy for sin. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Scripture also says in Proverbs 23 and verse 7, as a man thinketh, so is he. Right? Mm -hmm. So what you believe about yourself is critical too. If God's word says, trust me and I'm going to do it for you, or breakthrough is near, or I am your protection, I am your comfort, or I dispatch angels on your behalf, you can't continue to fight and struggle like you didn't hear what he just said. Amen? Amen. You know, and if you even think like that, you know, it is evidence that you have and are living with a defeatist attitude, meaning you're living and existing like you're already defeated and there's no hope for you. And that's error. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. That's not the word of God. And because if you allow that to be your portion in life, accept it as your uh, uh, portion in life, and just live in that space of, I'm defeated, woe is me, I'm not going to make it, then you can end up thinking that God loves everyone else <laughs> except you. And then that will cause a breach between you and God. And ultimately, that's what the enemy wants. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. What am I trying to say here? What am I trying to say? You need deliverance. Mm -hmm. You need deliverance. Mm -hmm. Amen? You know, we can sit and think that a pretty sermon is enough to free us, or we can think that reading the right book is going to break all the shackles and go down in our life spiritually and dig up all the roots of things in our generation and bloodline. But we have to break free at any cost. At any cost. Amen? Amen. We have to be willing to shame the devil and seek our deliverance. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. You know, we can't sit here focusing on what our deliverance looks like, you know? And I shared with my husband uh, this past weekend, I was watching something online and it was about a deliverance and a woman commented saying, you know what, you know, I really want to go through deliverance, but you know, I don't want anybody recording it. I don't want this and I don't want that. When you are focused more on what's going <coughs> on around you or what your deliverance would look like or, you know, am I going to foam? Am I going to manifest? You're worrying about the wrong thing if you're worrying about that more than being free. Amen. Amen. You know, sometimes, and I shared this in one of my groups, you know, when I was talking about fear, we can sit there with these things that we know aren't God in us, and because, you know, of fear, because, you know, the enemy has us trained, we just become comfortable with those things existing in our life. We have to stop worrying about what it's going to look like and get 
delivered, right? Amen. Amen. So as a pastor, a coach, as a mentor, I teach, and there's nothing wrong with telling someone something more than once or walking them through something they're trying to do more than once. But at some point, you have to get it. At some point, you have to allow those those constraints to be broken off of your mind, off of your emotions, and stop reacting and reading into something that people aren't even saying. Amen. Amen? At some point, you really need to wake up spiritually and begin to grab a hold of what God wants to do for you and keep hungering and thirsting after that thing until it has manifested in your life. We have to get to the point where we're, we're putting down the cell phone, we stop focusing on Instagram, we stop liking everything a celebrity says, and we need to focus on us. You have to focus on you getting free so that your mindset can be healed. Amen. 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 Here's a news flash. Pastors are not babysitters in the spirit, mm -hmm. right? They can give you insight and guide you, and that's what you know God has put them in your lives to do. But they shouldn't be holding you by the hand like a baby, um, trying to get you to understand you have to read your Bible every day. You have to pray. Those are things. And there's so many modern technologies like alarms on your phone that you can set reminders to do these things. You know, at some point, you need to grow up. You need to begin taking baby steps. Then you need to start walking strong and then running because your life, your spiritual life, and even your natural life depends on it. Amen. Amen. God needs you to be praying. Just like when the service started, Pastor Calvin was praying about the election. God needs you to be praying about this virus. He needs you to be praying about the election. Not still walking around thinking nobody loves you, everybody hates me, everybody I like leaves me. You know, you have to go and get your instructions from God. Go and get your marching orders. Mm -hmm. Find out what God has called you to do. Yes, coming to church. Yes, tuning in the channel. Yes, logging on to, to um, YouTube is okay to get a, a message, but what has God called you specifically to do in this life? Mm -hmm. You have to get your instructions, heavenly instructions. You know, here's a key, right? Uh, you don't find your next instructions from, from God in your pastor's Sunday sermon. Mm. You find God's next instructions in your prayer closet. Amen. Right? So now what you hear on Sunday can confirm what you heard in your prayer closet, mm -hmm. but it never takes the place of what God wants to tell you as you sup with him and sit at your feet, at his feet, in private. Amen? Amen. 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 We got to catch this. We have to catch this because there are too many of us dialing into a service today, dialing into a prayer call today, logging on to a video stream today. But are we just doing that to get along, to feel better about ourselves and what we're going through? Or are we ever going to get to the point where we are built up and allowing ourselves to be built up enough that now we can become a help for someone else, that we don't need the constant coddling and babying, but that we can become a force to be reckoned with? Amen. Amen? Are we ever going to do that? Are we ever going to do that? Amen? So how do you heal your mindset? You pray, right? You go into prayer until you forget how many hours you've prayed. It's not, oh, I prayed for 10 minutes, I'm good. I prayed for an hour, I'm good. You should be doing that periodically throughout the day. I think I shared this with my mentees earlier. You know, God speaks to me all the time. He's speaking to me through.
throughout the day. Why? Because I don't limit my prayer time to bedtime. You know, we have this bedtime, now I lay me down to sleep prayer. I'm not just doing that. I might be praying while I'm talking to my husband. We might be praying together. I might be praying while I'm washing dishes. I might be listening to something and soaking as I'm doing a task, but that's all prayer. And those are all ways that when you commune with God, he can speak to you. So we need to pray because we're, we're entering some serious times and God needs us to be soldiers in the army of the Lord. Don't be AWOL. Don't go away without leave when you are in need and you're claiming to be his. Don't just come to Jesus to get the eternal life. You come to Jesus, but then be ready to get in the fight. Amen. Amen? Amen. You know, we have to pray. Like I said, it doesn't matter how many hours. You can begin a short amount of time and just do little 15-minute spurts throughout the day, right? You need to learn to fast until you forget what a cheeseburger tastes, tastes like. So that's for me, because I love cheeseburgers, but there are times that it's like, listen, do I want power or do I want a cheeseburger? Do I want power or do I want fries with some cheese on it and ketchup? I mean, listen, we have to prioritize in life so that God can grow us up, amen? amen. Just imagine if you can see yourself in the spirit. Would you still look like your 16-year-old self because you haven't grown spiritually since you said the sinner's prayer, you know, in Sunday school? We have to grow up as believers. What do you look like in the spirit? Are you growing up or are you stunted? Amen? Amen. You know, when hardship tries to come, you know, not just me, but other pastors, you know, we're pouring out now so that when hardships come, you are equipped to do the work. When things get rough, I can't guarantee that I'm going to be a text away, that Reverend, Reverend is going to be a download away. God might have us off doing other stuff because we put this stuff out here, we've equipped you, now it's up to you to move on what you watched, what you learned, and what we taught. Amen? Amen. The safest place right now is at the feet of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. You know, I don't, you know, and I've heard people say it, and I don't feel sorry for those who, well, I miss going into the church, they said, and sitting down and uh -huh. all of that, you know. Your relationship with God should be so fortified that church open or church closed you're good with God. Amen. Personally and privately. That's what it's all about. It's not, oh, it doesn't feel right because we're not coming together. It doesn't feel right because I'm not sitting on a pew. It doesn't feel right because I'm in the comfort of my own home. There will come a time that we may not be able to walk into church buildings. Start building yourself up now because God wants you to be prepared for that. Amen? Amen. And here's the thing, we have to stop making excuses. Because sometimes we love people and we just make excuses because we love them. But we have to stop making excuses for those who make time for Maury, can make time to gossip on the phone, can make time to scroll and like on Instagram, or can buy an iPhone or iWatch. And I say that because, you know, you don't make time for God. You don't talk to God. You don't scroll your Bible like you scroll social media. Uh, you don't buy into the kingdom with the same kind of money that you give Apple. It's time for a wake-up call. It's time for a wake-up call. If you have an Apple product but don't tithe, there's a lying spirit that has seduced you into thinking that being a status symbol has more value than funding the kingdom of God. It's time to repent. Amen. It's time to repent. Amen. It's time to submit to God and say, Lord, sanctify me. You know, I thought I know what holiness was, but I only got the getting, the coming to church part. I need all the other parts. Sanctify me. Purify me, God. 
Wash me, God, and then build me up. When you clean me up, then build me up because I want to get it. I don't want to go through the motions like I'm going to heaven and end up in hell. Amen. Amen. We have to wake up from that. Mm -hmm. You know? You know, there are those who just have a checklist. They don't really want any part of God. They just want a house. They want a car. They want a job. They don't want any part of God, but they'll take it and be like, oh, look what God did. God did it. Amen. Hallelujah. Right? They want a husband. Let me say that again. They want a husband, <laughs> and that's the focus. And it's like, I'll serve you, God, if you tell me I'm going to get a husband. But when it comes to sacrificing and giving, and I'm not making fun, I'm being honest and truthful because I see it, I see in the spirit, and I know when people come and they want prayer and they're seeking specific things that they desire, that they have been brainwashed into thinking that once you have these things, your life is complete. You have the house, you have the car. The only thing that's missing is the husband now. So you're not feeling complete. The enemy has convinced you to not feel complete because you don't have a husband to tap on to that perfect little picture. Amen? Amen. But again, I said when it comes to sacrificing, when it comes to giving up some sleep, when it comes to giving up some food, they back away. They go missing. And that's because their mindset isn't healed and their mind isn't devoted to God. They want stuff, right? Mm -hmm. They want God to give, but they don't want the giver, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus. In this season, God is saying, I have need of you. That means if people in your life go missing, you have to just let them go. They know where you are when they're trying to find you, right? Don't break your back checking on people who don't want to live right, who don't want to do right, who don't want to sow right, and who don't want to honor right. God said, they'll answer to me. They'll answer to me. But for those who desire more, want to come higher, they're just two simple instructions. Repent to the Lord and then begin to come higher and seek him like never before. When you put in the work, there are rewards for hard work. My mom always told us that work hard, you'll get whatever you're working hard for. Amen? And God will help you. Amen? Amen. Like I said, you can call this a warning message if you want, but you know, we really have to get to the point where we stop giving God scraps of affection, scraps of affection, scraps of seeds, and then we want like the top tier stuff. You know, you put your 58 cents in the bucket, but you're like, I claim that BMW. You know, I'm not being ridiculous, but that's how some of our hearts are. We give God the least to get by just so we can say that we're giving the kingdom of God and persecuted Christians are starving because we won't give and support, but we'll give Apple. We're, we're saying I don't have it on my on our iPhones, you know, thousand and fifteen hundred dollar phones. That's not God and that's not right. Amen. That's not right. Amen. If you see me on an iPhone, you better know that I'm giving God iPhone level money and seeds. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Confess the sins you hide so that you can regain your right standing in God. A lot of us don't have right standing in God because we have sins, things that we do in secret that we think people don't know. And because we show up on Sunday or our name pops up as a number on someone's video stream, we feel like, well, I'm here. I've done my part. But what are you doing in secret? 
God wants to deal with those things that you're doing in secret because the mindset that has you thinking that God's not going to find out is a lie. It's a lie. Amen. God knows all. He sees all. And you're hemming up not just your blessings, but you're setting up the generations that come after you for failure. Mm -hmm. Okay? You're teaching them it's okay to go to church on Sunday, but at home on Friday night, this is what we do. Mm. Or these are the places we go. Or this is the foul language we use. God is not mocked. God is not mocked. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You know, the thing about being a prophet is that God is always showing you something about people. He shows you stuff, but wisdom is not, the wisdom of that is not always saying everything you know or see that he has shown you. So just because you haven't told the prophet doesn't mean the prophet doesn't know. God wants to help you, though. And even as I was putting this message together, he said, tell the people that, you know, I'm giving some of them last chances, mm. final chances. Um, in dreams, 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 dreams. And he said, these dreams will shake you, or like the kids say, the dream will have you shook, right? And he's saying that is a sign that this isn't your final chance. Mm -hmm. Everyone doesn't have the opportunity to say, God, forgive me before they go. Mm -hmm. Right? People are dying of this virus. And it's not only the elderly. People are going to sleep and never waking up. It's great to think, you know, I have time to get it together. But that's what the devil tells you to get you to procrastinate so you don't do it now, so that you do it later. And between now and then, he will bankrupt your life. So if you know anything today, heard anything today, just understand that the Lord is saying that it's time to get right. Not later, right now. Amen. No more delay. Amen. Let's give him some praise today. Amen. Because God is good. Thank you. Lord, we just thank you today for your word. We thank you, God, that you are building up kind of God, that you are a God that keeps your promises. That Lord, that if we come to you and allow the word of God to transform our minds, that our minds will be feet free, that they will be unshackled, Father God, that you would break off any mode of thinking that's not from you, Father God. We thank you today. We say, have your way in our lives. We give you the glory, Father God. Any kind of victim mentality, we command that to break right now in Jesus' name. Any spirit of procrastination, we break that off today too in the mighty name of Jesus. Any low self-esteem, low self-worth, Father, we cancel that assignment on our lives in Jesus' name. Father, we just thank you, Father God. Build us up, God. Heal any breach between you and us, God. Well, we don't, we want to be able to let our walls down. Down, God, so that we can know you personally, God. We want you to become our best friend. We want to be the one, we want you to be the one that we run to and tell everything to, God. Lord, show us how to come closer to you. Show us that you're not far away. Show us that you are even in our very midst right now. But most of all, Father God, show us that just because we're being corrected by you, doesn't mean that we aren't loved by you. We just thank you today, God. We give you all glory, honor, and praise.
praise God. I pray that you would just seal this word with the blood of Jesus, God. And I pray that those who grab a hold of it, those who need it would grab a hold of it, Father God, and that their lives would be shifted, their lives would be changed, God, and they would come to you, God, for an intimate relationship first, and you will add all of those other things they desire on after that, God. Lord, show them how to love you. Show them the way, God. When the enemy made them feel like going through the motions was enough, when they made, when the enemy made it feel like because so-and-so died or because they lost the baby or because their marriage fell apart, Father God, Lord, show them, Father, that you had no part in that. The enemy wants to flag those things to make it seem like you can't be trusted, Lord, and we know that you are trustworthy. We know that we can trust you, and we know that you have our best interests at heart. Amen. Help us today, God, filter the truth from the lies we've been told. Help us, God. I just praise you this morning, God. And I just pray, God, for a mighty transformation of your people. Those who are tired of being stuck, tired of not feeling like they're enough, I just thank you and praise you for what you're doing in their lives right now. Let them not be one of the ones who get those final message dreams, God. Let them realize that the time is now and they must act. They must witness in the hospitals. They must witness in the stores. They must witness, God, to those they come in contact with, God. Give them their marching orders and their assignments as they come to be with you in the secret place. I just thank you and I praise you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. I just want to thank Prophet this Linda for that powerful word this morning. God is about, God is, a, he's our savior. And that's what she was sharing again today. We keep thinking that tomorrow's promise that when somebody hurts us, yeah, let them stew it and I'm not going to talk to them for a little while. But what happened if you don't wake up the next day and you went and never was forgiven? forgiving that person. It can be held against them, but it'll also be held against you. We can't take that chance and stuff. We just have to be a repentful people. Again, I think I prayed earlier about different things that we go to are to build us up. Yeah. It builds character. Mm -hmm. It strengthens us. It has us not to trust in man, but to always trust in God. That's what Pastor, she was sharing with us this morning and stuff. It's about trusting God. When we talk about um, repenting, repentance is simple. It's the things that we used to do we don't do anymore. You know the things that you do that God wouldn't sign up on. So in your time, you have to go to him and, like she said, find that quiet spot and repent. I don't need to walk you through, a, like she said, a sinner's prayer. The repentance is the things that you would, if God was here now, that you wouldn't do in front of him. Yes. We keep thinking, she said, we keep thinking that we can do certain things and we can hide it from him. What can you hide from God? There's nothing you can hide from God. Let me tell you, since I surrendered to God, life has been so much better. The things I used to do, I don't even have to fight about trying to sneak and do them. You don't want to do them anymore. Because you found a new way. Ministering to people, helping people, lifting them up, saving them. Yes. Not that we be glorified for our actions, but the Father we serve, the one we surrender to, we get the glory. Don't miss out on what our prophetess was saying this morning. Be in the place that God wants you to be. Don't miss out. Tomorrow's not promised. We, we, we just talked about the election. We don't know what's going to happen on Tuesday and the days that follow. We don't know who's going to wake up. We keep thinking, okay, tomorrow I'm going to wake up, maybe I'll do it then. Or maybe I'll do it at the end of the week. Or maybe before I go to bed tonight. Now. 
Now. Now's the time. Come to Jesus. I always say come to Jesus. I like that analogy because that's what we do. It's about coming to Jesus. Come to Jesus just now. That's what we get up for each day. Come to Jesus to bring somebody to Jesus so that they'll have that chance to have a relationship. Listen, life is hard. We know that in, in business sometimes and, and at your job, sometimes there's favoritism, sometimes there's nepotism and stuff. You want me to tell you about the best nepotism there is? The best nepotism is when you surrender to God and recognize he's your father and let him move you through. Mm -hmm. We have men, women, people trying to hold us back all the time, whether it's on your job and you having that next step, the promotion or whatever else. We got all these folks holding you back. But all you have to do is trust in God and be like, I, I, I'm not fighting with y'all. God already said that. I, I already know in my spirit and stuff. God got it. Or whether it's going to be that business or whatever it is. She said, made so many good points. If you got an iPhone, if you got an iPhone, I know so many people got an iPhone and you ain't even tied it. That just blew my mind. You got the MacBook, or you got a new 2000 something out sitting outside. You sitting in a big house and wondering, well, if I tie, don't tie with God mind? Jesus. He said, some of us are going to have our rewards here. I guess you got your rewards here. Mm -hmm. The rewards that he had for us there in his home. It's greater than anything we have. You can't take that iPhone with you wherever you're going. To heaven or wherever else you go. That iPhone ain't going. That car ain't going. That house ain't going. We have to get right with our Father. She gave us a warning. And it's the warning. And, and God's not threatening you. He don't want to threaten you. He said he don't want robots. He can say, he said, listen, everybody just follow me. Do what I say. He didn't want that. He's given each of us free will. We've seen what some, some folks have done with free will. We're trying to bring people back. Come to Jesus. Not come to Calvin. Not come to Pastor Prophetess Linda. Come to Jesus. He's the only one to save you. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus just now. We don't have time to play. Every moment, every hour, we're being attacked. We're being kept from doing what God has called us to do. He's trying. He's trying to do downstairs. He's already defeated and don't know when to surrender. But I thank God that the God we serve is greater. I know what he's done for me. And if he's done it for me, like I tell everybody else, he can do it for you. Don't miss your opportunity. Please. Have that relationship and be blessed by God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Even as Pastor Calvin was sharing just now, I sat there and I just sense that the Lord is extending a special grace right now to help move you through the rough spot that you were in. Now that rough spot may be through your own doing. It may be because maybe because you've allowed the spirit of procrastination and procrastination is a spirit you allowed it access into your life god wants to free you right now mm -hmm. you need to just raise your hand Amen. and just surrender to the lord and say lord i repent forgive me i turn away of every i turn away from every act of disobedience to you. I surrender and I give you my life. I rededicate my life, Father God. And I stand waiting on your instruction. Amen. I believe that Jesus died for my sin. Mm -hmm. Jesus dying wasn't a waste of time to me. Amen. But it was for my sins and so I could be free. Just surrender to God right now. Whatever you need to tell him, if you need to weep, weep. Mm -hmm. Whatever you've done in secret, you can tell him that now. You, we're not saying email it to us so we can know what you're doing. 
release it to him now. If you're just fearful, like, do I know I can really trust God? Everybody in my family let me down. All my friends let me down. I think God's going to let me down, too. If that's your fear, release that to him Amen. right now. Amen. And once you release it, don't go and pick it back up tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Don't go looking, where's that procrastination? Where's that fear? Where's that wall that I use to keep me protected? When you release it to God today, let it go. Amen? Amen. God loves you. And we at Remnant love you too. Amen. Be blessed, people of God.